All right, all right. I'm here a little bit early. You know I like to show up early. Let's see who's going to get here. Sorry, I've got some. We just moved, y'all. So if you see some stuff in the background that you shouldn't see, uh, like that hat back there, I'm going to move that. Yeah, we got stuff everywhere. All right. What is going on? I said I had one person waiting. Get a mic check. You see, the mic looks like it's hot. So, hey, Mimi. Hi. <laughs> Nobody's on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's gonna go be over there. That's not in the shot. Okay. You know, there's nobody here yet. I can kind of see oh, okay. Let me, let me turn. That's better. Yeah, I'm trying to get my, my wide shot. <laughs> okay. Nice. Close some of these tabs. For coming, maybe. I thought you were going to be sleeping. I'm still tired. But Johnny said he was going to come, I messaged him. But it's like nobody's on yet. So I came up with this idea the other day for nobody's nobody's here yet. For um, I'm calling them short comms, where I kind of provide like a one to two minute video about my thoughts on each chapter, and that's for email subscribers only. So it's they're pretty good, you know. Come out with just like you know, kind of like just raw thoughts, and um, yeah, I felt I felt like that would be a good exclusive type of content. See you, on here. you can see me? <laughs> it's cool, right? Yeah, I put it on Facebook, but something weird happened. Hey, somebody's here. Panda L. Is it Valeria? Is it Valeria? All right. Hi, Valeria. Hey, Valeria. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect this, this to be the first time to see you again online during a live stream. Yeah, it is. All right. You're the first one. That was the first on my list of things to ask where everyone's from, but I know where you're at. <laughs> Let me go in the picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm Say hiding hi. in the back. Yeah, Joanna's hiding in the I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hiding. I lost so much weight from COVID. Look, I'm scared. <laughs> she went on the COVID diet. That's what we said. I lost like 15 pounds. 15 pounds. pounds. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Hopefully you're doing well over there, Larry. This is a good angle because you can see my microphone and everything. It looks very like legit, like podcaster. So I guess the two, it's just you two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, oh, no, no. This is Johnny's here. Oh, Johnny? Hey, Johnny. What's up, man? 
Uh, Johnny, so it wasn't it wasn't clear um, uh, really what day it was. Johnny thought it was tomorrow. It was tomorrow night. Oh, got the times confused. I don't know. I put on my initial email like um, that it was this morning for us. It, it's it's always going to be a struggle while we're out here. Yeah. So we got three people here. <laughs> the first part of it, it says in my notes here, ask where everyone's from. <laughs> but I know <laughs> I know where everyone's at. So um yeah. So after like I wait till like 10 minutes and then let's see if anybody else trickles in because I spent probably like maybe I'll just hang out. Oh, okay. Well, it's just um, people we know. Else yeah. And then I'll go hide again. <laughs> um, I spent like four or five hours doing marketing stuff yesterday. Um, like sending this out to everywhere where I'm at online. So Facebook, LinkedIn, email subscribers. If you're on my email, I've, I've had like two unsubscribes in the last because I've been cranking up the email. You know, like I'm not afraid to hit the button anymore. So... I got stuff to say. I'm putting it out there. This is a new era for me. So whatever, that's going to happen. But yeah, I put it all over local places, people that I knew. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be tough though from here. I know because the time difference is crazy. But this is the new setup. This is the new setup. This is the new crib. It's the new office. Um, yeah, got the mic here, got the headphones here. I wonder if I can get the books closer. Like, it looks like it's so wide in the shot. It looks so like there's so much room, but it's not, it, everything is not what it seems. There's a lot of space back here. There is, that is true. But it just looks like it's so far away. Like, uh, what's going on? And then I connected to the hotspot. Actually, the, um, I, the internet, I did the internet speed test. Internet's faster. So. On the hotspot? Then the hotspot, yeah. I'm on the, the, hotspot? the hotspot? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Valeria and Johnny are here. We got, we got California <laughs> here. We got the Bay Area here. We got the East Coast. My brother's in Georgia. Down in Georgia, Azana, y'all been having some storms down there, right? I saw on the news yesterday those hurricanes throwing some weather y'all's way. And I'm gonna be experimenting with different platforms. Um, I've done, I like YouTube live stream because obviously I have a YouTube channel and I can put this straight on YouTube after, but I know it's only chat in YouTube, so that's kind of a like Zoom's better. You can actually like people come in, but there's so many other platforms that I kind of want to stuff. Okay, just had a lot of rain down there in Georgia. Nice. Yeah, we had that too. We had a little typhoon pass through. We had, we had some rain where it was like pretty torrential. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then you'd be like, oh shit, we have to close all the windows. And then we'd be like, shit, close them. And then it'd be like, mm. and then it'd be like nothing. It'd be like, oh, the rain's over. And then we open it, and then it's like, Five minutes later, it's like, all the rain and wind is coming in the house. It's it's pretty random here. The, uh, the weather can change so quickly. From like breezy and gusty to just static and disgustingly hot. And it's been nasty hot here. Okay, so about one more minute. And then I'll get started into my, um, yeah, live stream stuff. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just two people, I told myself, even if it's just Ajani and my mama, <laughs> and Joanna, I'm still going to do this because it's good practice. It's good. Um, I don't know. This is, I want to do a lot more of this stuff. So as more people, maybe they'll find their way in. Now, 9.40 is not a great time here in Japan on a Saturday morning. Most people, 
<laughs> but it's like, what can you do? I mean, most of my audience is in the States, so um, you got to try. And I wanted to do it um, kicking off the weekend because I think that would be. Thanks, Valeria. I appreciate that. Okay. She said, do your thing. Exactly. And I plan to do that much. So welcome to my live stream. My name is Keith Hayden. I'm the creator of and writer and director, voice actor, <laughs> um, audio engineer of the Sirius and Lemnick podcast. What was formerly known as the Sirius and Lemnick episodic audiobook has now been rebranded to the Sirius and Lemnick audio drama. So audio drama is actually not in the title. It is just formally now called Sirius and Lemnick because it was getting a little bit too confusing with all the names. I got Sirius and Lemnick podcast, which was the kind of promotional podcast that I set up last year. Um, and that was meant to explain kind of my thought process and get awareness about the book out there. Um, but then I went and created, started creating what was formerly the audio book of Sirius and Lemnick. But it's kind of evolved into something else, as you probably know, if you've been listening to the to the story. So Sirius and Lemnick podcast, the one that was about me writing, that's more of a writer's podcast that has now been rebranded to Sirius and Lemnick behind the book. So if you search for that formerly Sirius and Lemnick podcast it is now called Sirius and Lemnick behind the book, while the drama like the poster behind me and the book, that's Sirius and Lemnick. That's it. Okay. So I didn't get that confused. But um, what I'm doing here with this is kind of something special because what started out as just an audiobook, and we all have kind of certain expectations nowadays when we hear the word audiobook, it kind of implies somebody just kind of dry reading their book and, you know, they're getting, you know, maybe they read it at a, maybe they have a little music, but, you know, there's no production per se, really. It's just kind of, you know, get the audio out there, read the book, done. This is not like that, and it has kind of evolved, and you can probably hear the progression of you as you listen to the early chapters and move into these later chapters. And definitely, definitely, once you listen to chapter 20 and 21, you will see that I have made a shift to another level as far as production, as far as where I want to take this podcast. And I'm glad that I've taken this pretty much exactly a month away from production to really rethink what my strategy was, really think where I wanted to go with this podcast and what I wanted to do, what I wanted it to become. Um, it has become something truly special, y'all. And um, I have to thank, uh, I'll be thanking her several times, but I will thank my wife, Joanna, um, because she gives me the time, she gives me the patience, the understanding to be able to do this. She gives me the support. And then of course, she lent me her voice her beautiful voice to voice these two chapters and a few of the earlier chapters and some of the later chapters as well to really bring these characters to life in a way that, I, you know, I can do falsetto all day, but I can't, I can't be her, you know, I can't do what she does with these characters. And she'll tell you, you know, that, Oh, I didn't do nothing. I just read, you know, whatever. No, she like really, she differentiated the characters enough to where it was good performance. You know, you'd never know. She has no acting background. She, she did a great job. Um, yeah, so it's coming into that production piece. And then, of course, the music has been brought in. That piece um, that I've been working on for the last six months or so, producing my own music, because in the beginning, I was like, man, I really want some music for this. And then your options are kind of limited. Um, if you've never looked for music for a project, then you don't know the struggle it is to get music into your project. You know, you have to buy licenses, you have to do all these other things, and, or there's like this creative commons where there's music everywhere, but um, it's all like stock music. If you listen to certain YouTube videos or whatever, you'll hear similar songs in the background. This is they're pulling from a established bank of songs that a lot of people use. And there's a large bank, there's hundreds of thousands of songs, but I wanted to kind of get my own sound. And you'll see, especially with this chapter, of course, all of the tracks that you've heard up until now have been my own. But this chapter is kind of a shift in tone and shift in quality. And it's really tailor made for this chapter. And we listened to the chapter um, a couple of nights ago and it really enhances the experience. Like it really takes you in um, 
to the story as well as uh, Joanna's vocal performance. So that's that's really where we're going um, as far as this is now an audio drama. Audio drama kind of, um, it, it indicates that there's a higher level of production quality, that we're not just putting out our voice and answering questions and then maybe having a little jingle at the beginning, middle, and end. No, it's, it's everything, the spacing and words, there's reverb, there's stuff as you can hear in the episodes and if you listen to them today, that it's really stepped up as far as the production. So obviously these take a long time. They can take days, weeks to produce one episode. Um, luckily, we've already recorded all of the all of the chapters before we moved because I knew we were going to move. Um, and now it's just the editing piece. But editing one chapter can take days. I think chapter 20 took me like three days. Chapter 21 took like four days to edit. So it's a lot of work that goes into these chapters to produce uh, a finished product that hopefully you find enjoyable that um, people can engage with. So, oh yeah, and let me say, I meant to say this, I put this in my notes as well. If you have questions throughout, that's the whole point of this, is to interact with me, the author, the creator of this story, of this book, then um, ask, just put it in the chat and I'm more than welcome. Keep it to, let's stay to the topic of the the book and the, the podcast. If you have listened to it, then um, yeah, ask me questions. But what I wanted to go into is just kind of a reading because I think that's, I think as an author and someone who has a love of books and has been reading his entire life, I like hearing from the author himself because that's something you don't really get a lot with books. You can just, you can get books anywhere. They're so easy to get now, but actually to like, hear the author in their own words is kind of unique. It doesn't happen all the time. And we can do that now easily through mediums like this, through live streams, through Zoom, whatever. So I thought it would be nice to hear me read. I, you know, it's not uh, my wife's voice like you'll hear in the, the podcast episode, but when you can, you just listen to the podcast episode. You can get that anytime. Just go, just whatever you listen to it on, listen. But I'm gonna read just short excerpts from both chapters. So I'll start with chapter 20. And chapter 20 is, is really a foundation. It's a foundation for the scene where these two characters, Li Ma and his daughter, Jinghua, are, they're gonna have this conversation that you know has been coming. The whole story has kind of been building parts of it up to this moment where it's been implied, especially the chapters before this, where they're, she's kind of looking around the study. And let me, th this is what I'm trying to do. Let me set the stage for you. So there's this room in Jean Hua's house that she's kind of been forbidden to enter her entire life. So finally, there's a circumstance to where she goes into the room, she looks around, and then she sees this information that is she finds very questionable, but it's about her. She knows it's very personal information, and the only person that it can explain it to her is her father, Li Ma. So that's where we're at when we hit chapter 20. I'm just going to read from the first couple of, of paragraphs of chapter 20. This is chapter 20, Origins, part one. All his life, Li Ma had always been careful with words. To him, every word needed a purpose, a mission. Like laser-guided munitions, every utterance he selected usually underwent the highest form of scrutiny before being deployed for a very specific cause. None should be wasted, ever. It had been one of the most important, it had been the most important lesson he learned from watching his father deal with unfortunate eventualities that often accompany fame and wealth. Even if you are silent, others will assume and judge. Choose your words carefully, he had told the young Lee long ago. And he never forgot that lesson. He lived by it. Through his demeanor, actions, and presence, he presented himself to others, turning to speech as a last resort not because he couldn't find the right words, 
but because there were not nearly enough of them to express the great depth of his understanding or feeling. So that's the intro to chapter 20. So hopefully that was a teaser enough to get you on experience and read the rest of the chapter, which is, is very good. And that sets the stage. And I'll say this about that paragraph. That was, and this is kind of a behind the scenes thing, but that paragraph was kind of a late ad. And I remember that was something um, in our initial, my initial feedback from my wife, Joanna, that she was like, you know, she helped me massage that and tweak it to where it's like, you need to understand that this character don't talk usually. He just kind of, he's a silent, kind of quiet professional. But in these two chapters, he probably does a lot more talking than you'll hear him in the rest of the book for most of the book. So I just wanted to set the, st the stage for that. This is a very significant happening. This don't happen every day. Okay. So that's chapter 20. Now I'll read a little bit from chapter 21. This is chapter 21, Origins, part two. Lee stood and with great care dropped to his knees to wrap her in his arms. It had been many years since he held her to let her cry. He didn't know it, but she cried for him, for the mother she never had a chance to know for Sirius and Lemnick, and for herself. When there were no more tears, Lee let her go and returned to his stool. He took the statue-like posture of a debilitated man on a park bench, eyes burning a hole into space between his feet, staring at everything and nothing. Tinhua's arms hung at her side, the vacant expression on her face mirrored the scene in her brain. Earthy, contaminated water everywhere. Evidence of the disaster floated on the surface, gently lapping at the side of the rooftop. No hope of rescue. She sat in a noiseless void, with few coherent or meaningful thoughts coming to mind. Unsure how to proceed, Somewhere across the cityscape, her father shared her fate. Alone, water sloshing at his feet and caught in a downpour, he wondered if he should move to a higher place or allow the rising water line to drown him where he stood. They sat together in complete solitude for a long time. Only the humming of the air conditioner marked the passing minutes. So that is from chapter 21. So you can tell there's been some devastating news that has come out at this point. And both of them are kind of feeling that. And everything from the way it's read, and Joanna did an excellent job <laughs> in this part. Um, the way she read that part um, is just so emotional and combined with the the, the music in the background that, as I said, was composed to reflect this very moment where these characters are kind of in this place where they don't know where to go. You know, use the analogy of kind of the flood. You know, there's a flood and they're just trapped. They're, where can you go? How can you proceed? How can you get off? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you're a subscriber on my list, this is where I'll bring up kind of something that I was actually just working on. Um, uh, 20 minutes ago, or at least 30 minutes before um, I went live, which is, I'm calling them short comms. So what these short comms are, they are subscriber newsletter exclusive. And not only are you gonna get kind of these types of comments from me directly about details about the story, but you're also gonna get like insights into those types of things like, why certain tracks were done a certain way they were done, certain directorial decisions that I made as far as inserting music or different effects in. And then of course the book itself, because I'm the author of the book, I, the mindset of why I wrote what I wrote. So it's, I think it's gonna be an interesting feature. So everybody here, I don't know if you're on my list, 
I know what Johnny is. I don't know if Valeria can go on my list, but um, th that is something that I want to offer to um, exclusive to subscribers is this kind of, um, they have access to this thought process. Um, so if you're not a subscriber, everybody here knows me, but if you didn't know me, then maybe you want to subscribe and get this, get this perk because I actually just sent out the email. Of course, there's, there's no charge or anything. It's just going along with my um, with my newsletter that I send out. And I'm going to be dropping emails when I post chapters from now on because that's something that I haven't been doing up to this point. And that's another place where I've been kind of, I want to say not dropping a ball because I wasn't, that wasn't my goal. Originally, it was just make the audio book and move on. But now it's turning into something different. I'm trying, I'm at this point where I'm trying to go pro with this. So if you noticed, if you've been to my website, there's a new welcome video. How does people subscribe? Good question. So there's plenty of ways to subscribe. You can go to my website, keithhayden.net, and then there's a subscribe page there. On the front page of my website, there's subscribe. There's two subscribe boxes there. Um, there's links to subscribe in most of my YouTube videos. So most of the videos have subscribe buttons um, or links. They're there. Um, most you can also go through my uh, social media. Social media, at least you can contact me and say you want more information. I can put you on the list. So there's tons of different ways to subscribe. You can just head to the to the website. As a matter of fact, let me put the website in the chat right now. So that's a good that's a good question. So check out my welcome video and 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 if you listen to my watch my welcome video, I kind of I. I meant every word that I said in that video, you know, like the main reason that I started writing was to have more impact, you know, first with my first book, Tower of Babbling. And the second was to really get people to start thinking more in depth about our society and our, and our world, because we know, you know, nowadays it's just, you know, we were watching TV last night and it's just, there are so many things that are happening in our world. It just, it feels like you can't, ever shut out the noise. There's so much stuff to consume. There's podcasts, there's YouTube channels, there's social media, there's, of course, you know, your job, you know, most of us work. Um, so you've got to do that stuff. You've got family, you've got people to take care of, things like this. And it's so hard to be like, okay, who am I? What am I doing here? And what's kind of my contribution besides just going to work and, you know, getting money and all that stuff? What can I contribute to society? And how can I find a unique place to make it better than it is instead of just sitting on social media and complaining about stuff and complaining about COVID and all this stuff. And trust me, there's plenty to complain about, you know, try, try moving overseas to a country that really doesn't have COVID under control during the pandemic. That's what we just did last month. And I'll tell you, it's not very fun. There's a lot to complain about and it's easy to just get caught up in that. It's easy to get caught up in everybody else's mess. And instead of, taking time to stop and think. And my book does that. That's why I wrote it. It does it in a, in a kind of entertaining way that combines, that does what I'm good at, which is kind of synthesis, taking elements from different things. Like, you know, and I use the example of Chinese dramas and American war movies. It's like, what do they have in common on the surface? Nothing. If you just think of it as like the words, you think of Chinese dramas, and if you don't know Chinese dramas, you think of Chinese culture. Well, what does that have to do with America? It seems so, especially in, in a lot of Americans' minds, where I'm from, it seems so split, like they can't ever relate. Well, you got a book here that kind of puts them together in a way that is impactful, in a way that, of course, is respectful to both to both cultures, but gives it more importantly, gives us insight into the human condition. And I wanted to display so many emotions. And this book, there's so many themes and there's so many things that if more people read the book, I really want to have more discussions about the content in this book. I mean, there's so many scenes, there's so many characters, there's so many things that happen in the book that they speak to deeper issues, not only in on a societal level, but on the personal level, on the personal level. You know, and this is just one of them, of course, the father and daughter, but there are plenty of other relationships in the book to explore. So it's about half an hour in. 
Um, I've kind of talked as much as I would like to own the floor, but I'm going to open that up to any questions. I see we got somebody else who trickled in. Thank you for, for joining the live stream. Um, go ahead and shout out where you're from, if you feel comfortable, um, or where you're at, if you want to. And thanks for joining this morning or this evening. If you're here in Japan or in Asia, or if you're back in the U.S. at home. <laughs> hey, what's up, Mark? <laughs> 400 meters. Yeah, nice, nice. Thanks for joining, man. Appreciate the support. Is it really 400 meters? <laughs> According to, to uh, Google, Google Maps, right? That's funny. Yeah, it's all the pictures of your place, man. Looks like it's coming together. Good stuff. Well, everyone that's on the live stream knows me, so that's that's nice. That's nice. I would appreciate since y'all do know me. A generalization. Uh, I see. Since y'all do know me, I would appreciate if you spread the word about. Um, the story, I, hopefully y'all, I know as Johnny's heard the, the audio drama, but I know a lot of people that, you know, if you know somebody personally that's putting up this stuff, the desire to be like, oh, you know, it's nice just because you know them and all that stuff. And that's fine. It, I, I appreciate that support too, but I'm looking for like people who don't know me to experience it. So I can really hear and get feedback, not just on the story, but really on the audio side too, because that is something that is new for me that I'm working on. I mean, writing a book is new um, as well, but um, yeah, I'm looking for that level of feedback. So if you know people that are into science fiction, that are into military fiction, that are into, um, that would be interested in this type of story that kind of combines these different things. You got Japanese anime influences in there. Um, like I said, Chinese culture, Chinese dramas, um, and then, of course, a little bit of the weird. Now, one of the things that I wanted to bring up during this live stream. Oh, OK, OK, thanks. Thanks. Um, thanks, Remy. I'll answer your question. How do you get inspired for translating themes, emotions into your audio drama music? Um, Joanna already knows the answer to this question, but she. she, she oh, I told you. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. Um, how do I get inspired? I feel like music for me, a long time ago, and this this is great because it gave me a chance to talk about why I got into like so deep into doing music. Um, so I'm actually very new at doing music. I started about six months ago. I started in March of this year. <laughs> so I previous to that, my only experience doing anything with music was playing the trumpet in seventh grade, <laughs> which I, yeah, I didn't really like it very much. And I remember my mom was pissed because she spent like $500 on this damn trumpet. And she was like, you better play this thing. You better learn how to play it. And then like the next year I was like, oh, mom, I don't want to do that. And she was like, really? <laughs> so anyway, that was my last experience with music. So music was always like this, this, this very like dreamy type thing. Oh, you got to feel the music, man. You hear all these people talking about feeling it, but I came at it from a technical point of view. So I was teaching math at a high school at the time earlier this year, as most of you know. And <laughs> Johnny's laughing because he knows that story. <laughs> um, I was teaching math and I found this YouTuber, popular music YouTuber, Andrew Huang. He's been doing YouTube videos about music um, for years. And I found that he had this course that he was going to help you learn how to produce three finished tracks in 30 days. So I just kind of on a whim, I remember it was like a random Saturday, I had caught one of his music video, his videos about music theory. And if you don't know music, music theory is kind of like, it's like we have language, music theory is like the linguistics of music. It's like how you put music together and it's like the, the skeleton of what makes music music. So it takes music and boils it down into things like chords and tones and notes and, and melodies and harmonies. And then that's how you, it's the building blocks of music. 
And I was really interested in that because I was teaching math at the time. So I was like, man, there's so much math in music. I, I had never thought of it that way. I just thought, oh, it's this dreamy thing. You got to kind of feel it. If you don't feel it, you can't do it. So I came at it interested in that side. So slowly I bought a keyboard. You can't see the keyboard, but I have a keyboard here. And I started learning a little piano. I did that course. I finished three tracks and the tracks turned out pretty good. So good, actually, that I have used those tracks in the audiobook, and they're not the best tracks, you know, they're pretty plain and kind of bland and whatever, but they, they had a feeling to them. They had a, they had a tone, they had a sound. So to answer a long answer to uh, Joanna's question, I get inspired by story. To me, music is story. It's just another way. It's no different to me. This is how I think of it than writing the book was. I'm just basically translating. And that's why every track that I do, I can sit here and tell you all the 17, 18 tracks that I've done, they all have kind of an arc to them. They all start have a starting point and a unique, distinct ending point that is different from where it came from. So that's how I get inspired. I'm just like, what's the story of this song? Like, what am I trying to portray with this music? And that's, and that's the interesting thing, right, about music. None, if you're not a musician or hell, even some musicians don't even care about this. They just play from a feeling. They just get it down. And music begins to you forget about all the, the notes and the, the leading tones and all the technical stuff that comes to music. And you just kind of feel your way into it. It just kind of becomes a part of you as you're playing. And I just had this happen when I was practicing piano uh, last night. So it's another way to translate from one medium to another for me. And I'm inspired by that. I love story, <laughs> obviously, you know, like writing. Um, but even before I wrote, like when I was an agent and when I was uh, in law enforcement, that that's what attracted me to the job, because it's less about like busting in doors and pointing your, your weapon at people. It's more about people's stories. That's all it is. Everybody's coming at it from a different perspective. And you are your job is to collect their story and tell it in the most factual way as possible to be able to adjudicate or whatever, send them to jail or help them, you know, if they're a victim or whatever. So that's what I saw my job as when I was an agent. And then same when I was a teacher, when I was a teacher, it's all about story, especially last year, man, I'll tell you teaching like this, like through this type of thing during COVID, man, when you tap into these students' stories, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. They start to listen to you when they know your story, it's so powerful. When I would tell them about my time in the military, they loved hearing about, you know, they love it. Oh, Mr. Hayden, tell us another military story. Oh, you know, you're so old, Mr. Hayden. And they, you know, you got stories for days. This is one kid always called me ancient. He was like, oh, yeah, the ancient ones. About to tell us another story. Here he goes. But they love these stories, you know. And then subsequently, I would tap into their stories, you know, um, whatever it was, even though obviously they're like, 15, 14, 15 years old, and then their story is just beginning. But tapping into that is what inspires me. And to me, music is just another medium for telling story. It doesn't matter that it's made of notes. And, and of course, you can get really technical into the, the music part of it. And I try and remind myself that just like no different than grammar in a book, you don't care that I use a certain prose or whatever. It just matters if the story speaks to you. It doesn't, the nuts and bolts, it's greater than some of its parts, the whole book. That's what a song is to me. That's what music is. And that's how I get inspired. Is that a good answer? <laughs> okay. I try to go as in depth as possible. Mr. H. Yeah, he used to call me Mr. H. Um, it was a funny story because um, just a couple weeks ago, the teacher that replaced me teaching um, algebra one at the school, she quit after like the first two weeks of school. My school could be pretty rough. And she was like a younger teacher. I remember I met her when she was um, interviewing earlier this year. And so the principal was like, uh, hey, can you teach from Japan? <laughs> I haven't heard from him. I doubt it's going to happen because the time difference is too crazy from here in California. But that's funny. They already want me back. So are there any more questions? That was a good question. I like having excuses to 
to tell stories. Yeah, I know, right, Johnny? I was like, damn, first two, she didn't last two weeks? I thought my school was rough. I didn't think it was that rough. But like I said, like, I got I got a lot of thick skin after being in the military and doing everything that I've done. And of course, I'm a little older, so she, but she was pretty young. I want to say she was very recently removed from college. So going to teach at a low-income inner city school in the middle of Sacramento, I'd be tough for somebody that's that young. What other questions? You know, I had a, I was going to do like a, you know, that was one of my enticements to get people to come. It's like, oh, I give you an autographed copy of the book, but all y'all have, well, Mark, I guess you don't have a copy of the book, I, but I can easily, that's good because that's going to save me on mailing fees. <laughs> <laughs> I was very concerned about these mailing fees. I was like, man, what if they come from like, I don't know, France or something? Like, I don't even know how to mail from there, mail to there, but I was going to do it. I, I know you go to the post. <laughs> but I'm like, how much is it going to cost to mail a book? I mean, it's just a book, but still. Um, now you can just go 400 meters. I know. Now I can walk 900 meters to, to Mark's place and then give him the book. Um, now we're getting towards like the end of the time. I did want to talk about some un upcoming things. And of course, if you have questions, please ask me questions. Um, but I wanted to talk about some things that I have projects that I have in the works and things that um, I'm kind of thinking how I'm going to do. So first and foremost, obviously, is chapter 22. That's the next chapter. And I'm going to take a few days to kind of decompress y'all because this is a lot of work. I'm a kind of a one man show at this point, as far as like setting all this stuff up. And it takes a lot of work to set all of this up to like go back and sending out emails, marketing, getting the live stream ready, you know, moving this, this, <laughs> this thing heavy. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. So um, chapter 22, I'll probably begin sometime next week, um, editing that and working on that next one. So that's going to come. It'll probably be out by the end of next week, maybe. Um, short comms, like I said, the short comms are going to continue to be a theme. Um, video, after the success of my impromptu house video, <laughs> I've been inspired to do more videos, you know, like, because I'm really good at video. I like doing videos. And to me, I used to shy away from videos because it was so much damn work on the back end. Like, it took forever to upload the damn videos. And I don't like editing videos. I'm not really good at that. I have no desire to get into to video editing at all. So I'm I'm pretty much a one one take guy. Then upload. I don't like fooling with video too much. But um, because video is so easy to do now, you know, like phone quality is just really good, and you can just boop, it's up and done. So I'm doing a lot more videos now, if you can tell. Like, and I think that obviously people like video. You know, as an alternative. So I'm going to be doing more videos. Um, in the future, obviously, I'm in Japan and for the next few years. And I want to take advantage of that because I am doing Japanese. I have a tutor. Um, I'm working on my kanji. I'm practicing. I'm using it when we're out in, the, in town and stuff. So um, Tower of Babylon, I'm looking to enhance that with... A Tower of Babbling Japan edition. Not like the book, but focusing more on a either a short video course or an audio course. And I've kind of sketched out um, a way to do like language teaching here on island because we already we have so many people, sofa status Americans coming weekly to the island that are brand new. That first thing they want to do, especially if they're these young kids, they want to learn Japanese. So Obviously, I have a book that teaches how to learn any language. There's an opportunity right there. So that's like a future project after, I don't know, maybe after the audiobook's done. But that's something that I'm, I'm thinking about doing. Um, definitely a, a short course. Be on the lookout for a short, like, um, Japan, Japanese-centric adaptation of 
the Tower of Babylon. Because I went back and listened to an episode of Tower of Babylon um, a couple of days ago, actually, just randomly. And it's good stuff, y'all. The the podcast, it was my first podcast. It was a little shaky. You know, I was still very new at podcasting last year. But um, check out the Tower, Tower of Babylon podcast if you um, are trying to learn language. And I know there's a million and one reasons not to learn language nowadays. I You know, main one being technology is so good now there's all these AI solutions and they're actually good. Like they're, they're not bad. So, but I still think, and I will always believe this, that us learning language and speaking somebody else's language straight from our lips is way more valuable than having it go through Google translator or Microsoft translator, whatever. Like it just, there's something about the human voice that when it's communicating and then it's the effort, right? When you see somebody struggling to, to, speak English, maybe it doesn't seem as special, but they know, you know that it's special. And anybody that's ever tried to learn another language or had to for different reasons understands this. And I think everybody here has at some point done it. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's that empathy. And that's the whole point of a lot of the stuff that I do. It, it may, I'm trying to get people to be more human and basically evolve, right? And that's a big theme of Sirius Olympic is evolution and not in the, the physical Darwinian sense, you know, like evolving a sixth toe or, or something like that. Evolving as people. That's what I'm trying to get people to do. And that's what I'm trying to facilitate. And that's kind of my mission statement. That's encapsulated in my personal mission statement, which is to connect humanity and cultures through education, technology, and story. That's my personal vision statement. And everything that I've done from law enforcement to education, to interpreting, to translating, to this stuff now, to writing, has been under that umbrella. And I just kind of realized that I came up with that just a few weeks ago. Actually, I think it was last week <laughs> I came up with that. But it made sense to me that this is who I am. You know, this is this is my impact. And you'll see that that on my social media, you'll see it on my website, you'll hear me say it because that is my unique skill. That is what I bring to the table in this world, in this society. And I wanna be more of that for people that are willing to hear me and listen. So um, I had planned to say this, this wasn't in my notes, but I've had people unsubscribing from my list. If you wanna unsubscribe, go ahead and unsubscribe. You don't hurt me none because I'm trying to get people, I'm trying to find the real ones. I'm trying to find the people that my message resonates with, that I resonate with. Obviously I understand, you know, um, maybe you don't like what I have to say. You don't like that I'm black. You don't like how I write things, you know, whatever. Then go read another book, go listen to another podcast. You know, like there's billions, billions of things that you that can consume your time. You don't have to mess with my stuff, but I will tell you, and as Johnny already knows this, because we've talked about this at length many times, that everything that I produce, that I try and produce, has either an educational aim to it, or it has, it's meant to inspire. It's not just, I don't do just entertainment fluff. And that's what people don't understand yet, but they will. The stuff I'm putting out is meant to, and I, I have this at the top of my website, it's meant to, to inspire, educate, entertain those those things of course the entertainment piece because i've learned as a teacher ajani knows this he taught for several years you've got to have some type of entertainment edge in this world just dry rote stuff that a lot of us grew up on go and throw the textbook on the on the desk and tell them read chapter one through six that don't work no more not with these kids not with anybody you know everybody expects a little bit of something sprinkled in with their entertainment and you see that all over youtube you see that all in linkedin LinkedIn is, is pivoting to do more entertainment based, like creator focused things. I mean, oh, yeah, LinkedIn. They're even like, hey, we got to do this. You know, like this is what people want. They want short, they want engaging, which most of the time means entertaining in some way, and they want impact. And there is, you know, just ask all of the billions of users on TikTok. I read yesterday that. As of June 2021, guess what the most downloaded app was in the world? TikTok. TikTok. I'm not on TikTok because I'm not on that Gen Z stuff. Like my stuff is for grown folks. But 
There's grown folks on TikTok. <laughs> I'm just doing it. I'm I'll just, I, I haven't dipped my toe into TikTok yet. Cause I just, had, I'm not, I'm not after that demographic and I understand that, you know, and then uh, <laughs> I read this thing the other day. Somebody said, what am I do? Falling off milk crates on TikTok. <laughs> I don't know what he meant, but falling off of milk crates. I was like, damn, bro. <laughs> He said, you don't have the cholesterol for this. You can't do this. <laughs> TikTok is cancer. Yeah, man. It's just, and it's all bite-sized videos. The videos are no longer than 90 seconds on TikTok. But people, I'll tell y'all something funny that I heard on the radio just yesterday. Apparently there's this challenge going on on TikTok that is like the bathroom challenge or whatever. And your challenge is to just basically steal stuff from bathrooms. And it, it, public bathroom. I'm serious. This is a real thing. So it started with people like stealing toilet paper and stuff. Like, and most of these are kids, by the way, younger kids. But now somebody taking toilet seats and bathroom stall doors and it's out of control. No. Don't steal bathroom stall doors. That's not, that ain't, that's not gangster. <laughs> it's just not this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would just be food videos. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, are there any other questions? We're on, we're almost. Yeah, it probably would be popular. I mean, just a chinchilla, a cute chinchilla, just eating food, and you would probably get so many, so many likes. But are there any other questions, y'all? I've really enjoyed this. I know it was just people that I know, and like I said, that's fine. Um, I'm cool with that. I this is good practice for me for bigger things to come. And I'm going to keep and I'm really making an effort to grow my following to get people to experience this story. As of yesterday, I didn't check this morning, but I've had over 200 downloads of the podcast since June. Now, I know like in the grand podcast sphere that 200 downloads is nothing. But for me, it means that at least 200 people at least have heard of my book. And that is what most authors want is for people to find their work. And it's already having that impact that, you know, and I've had discussions with my brother, hell, my mom, my mom read the book. She liked it. She read the whole thing. Exactly. Exactly. Mark progress is progress. She read the whole thing. And we had a discussion about it a couple months ago. And I was like, way to go mom. You know, I, cause my mom's not really a reader. Like she doesn't read casually very often. So the fact that she got through the entire book, read the whole thing, and then was like asking me questions and stuff, that's what I want, you know, because it is meant to make you think about stuff. And that's why I say this this book, this story will make give you something to talk and think about. And the think piece is more important to me because we don't do enough of that nowadays. We just be, you know, Google mapping it. And that's wherever it takes us. It takes you down, you drive into the ocean because Google Maps told you to, right? That's the that's the analogy, right? That's where these algorithms can, can lead you if you're not conscious and you don't take control of where they're taking you. You gotta be able to think though. And if you don't exercise that thinking muscle, that's why I tell my students, if you don't if you don't think and plan for yourself, some somebody else or something else will nowadays. Somebody's gonna run your life. Either your boss, your parents, hell, Google, YouTube, they will run your life. Facebook, these tech companies will run your life if you let them. And they can do it easily. They got your data. They got your number. They know exactly what to serve you up every day to keep you coming and feeding and scrolling to the end of time. Till that thumb fall off. All right. So I didn't mean to end on like a negative Point. But you know, you get what I'm saying. And we've all experienced this. We've all experienced this. And then <laughs> hilarious laughing. <laughs> I know, doom and gloom at the end. <laughs> the algorithms got you. Oh, we're screwed. <laughs> I know. And I find myself every day, like, you know, because I do it sometimes. I'm like, oh man, I don't know where this place is. Because when I was here in Okinawa, oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Sasani. Appreciate that. When I was here in Okinawa 10 years ago, the only way to find places, people had like 
maps in their head, not maps in their head, but they, it was all landmark based. So it was like, oh, just go here, go there, turn left at this light pole or whatever. But now Google Maps, because Google Maps and um, Apple Maps, whatever, back in the day, they didn't work very well because they just did. You know, it was 2011. So it wasn't as good as it is now. But here now I'm here. Google Maps, Waze, whatever. They work fine. And I find myself like, man, 10 years ago, I, I used to be able to find my way around here. No problem. And now I got Waze telling me the way to go. I mean, Waze is good because it tells you when there's a speed trap and stuff, and it's actually in Japanese, so that's good. I get some Japanese practice, but it's like, come on, man. Can you think for yourself? Did you forget how to do that? You know, I think that's what I tell myself. Maybe you don't tell yourself that because it is convenient, y'all, and that's where these tech companies get you, the convenience of being served up. And somebody said it best when I read it somewhere. It's like, that's why they call it the feed because they're just feeding you. They're feeding you all this, this grass, right, of, of content, right? Face, they all do it. All of them do it. Even places that you would think, oh, they're not using this stuff. They're not getting me. They're getting you. They're showing you. I have to enjoy it. Okay, for some people that are directly challenged, like my wife here, Google Maps is a must. You know, it's helpful. But then she has me most of the time to, so like, tell her the right way to go. But um, for the rest of you, you got to think for yourself. Okay, so I've enjoyed this. I love doing these. Um, I'm going to be experimenting with different platforms in the future. I won't do because I, I like the chat, but I don't like that there's no like, you can't interact, you can't see people. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna be testing out. So be on the lookout. If you're not subscribed to my list, um, consider subscribing. It's not just going to be like I do. I have an email monthly that I've been doing since the past year, which is like every month I send out um, an, uh, an author update. And that is the big one where I give I used to give and I probably still will give um, updates on all of my projects. I give like coming soon. And then I have this this unique feature, which is called media recommendations. Because for a long time, I've been keeping a journal of media here that I consume. It's movies, it's books, it's video games, whatever. And this is kind of like one of the most unique things that I do is kind of giving. And sometimes I'll give review. I've, reviews. I've added podcasts that I'm listening to, a lot that I've listened to in that month. So it's just kind of a way, like, think of it as like a curated list, I guess it would be like curated that I listen to it. And that's another place that I get inspiration is by the stuff that I listen to and watch. And I'm pretty deliberate about what I watch most of the time, except when I turn on AFN and whatever stairs there. <laughs> but most of the time, I'm pretty deliberate about like, you know, what podcast I'm listening to, what game I'm playing, what book I'm reading, and it serves a particular purpose. And I'm getting something from it. So I share that with you on my subscriber emails. And then, of course, now I talked about the short comms and the other stuff. You're going to be getting updates about the podcast episodes that are coming out and things like that. So if you look, if you are subscribed to my email list right now, you have a fresh email in your inbox right now of the first two short com videos, which are my comments on chapters 20 and 21. You have a link to the entire track of Origins. So the full track, so you can listen to it. That's been uploaded to YouTube. It should be ready by now. And I'm going to check, but you can check on your podcast provider of choice. Chapters 20 and 21 should be hot right now. They should be live. So I haven't obviously been able to check, but I scheduled them to go live during this. So feel free to go and listen to it. And I'll end with this. If you have feedback and you have questions because I'm trying to do q and I need to get enough questions to do a Q&A episode. So if you have feedback about you listen to the episodes or whatever, and you're like, oh, this was interesting or whatever, what what was your inspiration about it behind this character or this scenario? Email me. Email me. You can contact me, Keith at KeithHayden.net. You can find that on my website. You can go directly to the contact me page and you know what to do um, or social media. You can hit me up on any of the social media channels. And your 
questions or comments may be featured in one of the episodes of the podcast. And this is something that I did during Tower of Babbling and it worked great. I always had some feedback, even though I was a brand new podcaster, didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, I wanted to incorporate that interactive piece into this podcast because there's a lot more stuff we could talk about. So, yeah, soro soro, as they would say here in, ja in Japan, um, Jikan has gotten away from us the time. It's already been an hour of me talking. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed this. I love doing this. Um, thank you for spending your Saturday morning or Saturday evening over there in the States with me. And I, you will be hearing from me again uh, very soon. So enjoy the podcast and have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone.